الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى يا ربي لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى أتاه اليقين فالله مرجه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحنا على سنته وتوفنا على ملته وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا ثم أما بعد ما دي respected brothers and sisters I would like to start today with a real story a story of a father who was wealthy used to feed his family very decent food and um, things has changed and he went through a very tough financial problem and he was not able to um, afford the kind of food and clothes and services that he used to provide for his family members and it was Ramadan and of course because of his social standing and because of his uh, modesty he was not able to ask others for for any um, assistance and he used to feed his family on the iftar only cheese and olive oil his children could put up in the first couple of days but in the third day his youngest son told him that father cheese and olive have burned out our stomach and that we are fasting and we need something that help us survive this heat and we are almost about to faint when we smell the you know the, the um, smell that comes from the kitchen of our neighbors and when the father heard this he went to one dark corner of his house and burst in tears because he was not able to answer the need of his own children and if you find this real story emotional uh, congratulations for the humanity we still have in our hearts this is a real story and there are millions of similar stories around the world and the reason why i started with this story is i want to talk about one of the virtues of this month of ramadan one of the names of Ramadan, according to the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, Ramadan Shahrul Muasa, the month of solidarity. This is the month of solidarity. We can see this around the Muslim world when people in Ramadan they spread these long sheets and tables and invite um, anyone to come and, and to eat from these tables. They call it Mawa'id al Rahman, the tables of Ar Rahman. Everybody is invited. And we see also this. Ramadan bag when people wealthy people they can put you know rice and date and, and and oil and so many other things and give it to those who are in need this is the month of Ramadan the month of sharing the month of solidarity the month of practically thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the so many blessings that we enjoy Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam was the most generous person but he's even more generous in the month of Ramadan and Abdullah ibn Abbas the narrator of the hadith he said that this, this happened when when Jibreel comes to Rasulullah sallallahu every night to study Al-Quran with him so he's more generous than the wind that brings the heavy cloudy the, the heavy cloud that brings water and gives life to people is more generous than this wind sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa wa and maybe that's why we call this month Ramadan Kareem. It's very generous because we feel the blessings of this month. We feel the, the, the blessings in our um, uh, family, in our homes, in our uh, rizq. And it is Kareem because people are so generous in this month. And, and, and so they should be. So brothers and sisters, 
every night, alhamdulillah, we are blessed of having this joy of having the family and friends and eating wonderful iftar. I want you tonight to count how many um, um, different food we have. And we need also to remember that, that some people who spend the whole day fasting, but they do not find any food to break their fasting with. Or if they find anything, it's, it's merely bread, or maybe cheese, or beans, or something of this nature. Al-Islam encourages us always to feed those who are in need. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حَبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا When Rasulullah وسلم, came to Al-Madinah, one of the first statements he made is, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَطْعِمُوا الطَّعَامَ O people, feed those who are in need. وَأَفْشُوا السَّلَامِ Spread peace. وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامْ And pray قِيَامُ الليل. We know that Shah Ramadan is the month of Ibadat. And we, when we talk about Ibadat, we often focus on Siyam, Qiyam layl and Taraweeh, and we debate 8 or 20. Uh, we make Umrah in Ramadan, and we make a lot of Adhkar, we do I'tikaf in Ramadan. But we also need to remember that this month is the month of al muasa the month of solidarity, the month of sharing, the month of remembering those who are are less fortunate, those who cannot even afford feeding their own children. As I said, Al-Islam encourages people to feed those who are hungry. It's very painful for, for people not to be able to, 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 to satisfy their, their, their hunger. It's very difficult for parents who cannot afford providing food for their children. And especially in the month of Ramadan, when we see many people are fasting, are fulfilling this pillar of Islam, fasting for, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when the sun sets, they don't have enough to feed themselves and to feed their children. And we have seen today these horrible pictures of a Chinese policeman forcing Muslims to drink and to eat because the government decided to prohibit fasting for Muslims because this reduces, according to them, reduces um, production. And they prohibited Muslims from practicing the basic religious rights. Think about it. You're going to work and your employer forces you to eat or to drink. Literally, four or five soldiers holding someone and someone putting water in his mouth. Force feeding, like what happened in Guantanamo. And we need to remember our brothers and sisters in, in Burma, those who put their entire family in these you know, old boats, trying going from one country to the other to escape burning alive, and no one is willing to welcome them. And they stay in these old boats for days. They don't know where to go. They cannot go back to their own country. Or they will be either massacred or burned alive by the government and by the people. And they are going to other so-called Muslim countries and they refuse to welcome them. We need to remember that hundreds or thousands, if not millions, of refugees, whether in Syria or in Turkey or here and there, those who have been displaced and those who are suffering as a result of these um, wars and civil wars and we need to remember those who cannot really afford anything for themselves and for their uh, children yesterday I just heard that hundreds of people in Pakistan just yesterday died because they were fasting under a severe heat 44 uh, uh, degrees Celsius and they could not take it and many people just died. They lost, they, they've lost their life because they're working under these um, tough circumstances. We need to remember even those who are living near us, those who are living here in Michigan. According to statistics, one of four children in Michigan, 24% of the children who live in Michigan live in poverty, and with household income under 24,000 a year. These are facts. 
These are numbers and statistics of people around us who don't have to go so far to find those who are in need. So that's why Rasulullah said, in the month of Ramadan, whoever feeds a fasting person will have a reward like that of the fasting person. When you feed or you offer iftar for someone who is fasting, you, inshallah, you will get similar reward to his fasting without, of course, diminishing or reducing the reward of this person. And I'm not talking here about feeding wealthy people. This is something we do just to strengthen our relationship, invite friends and family members over. That's nice to do, but that's, that's not the objective. The objective is to care about the empty stomachs and those who cannot really afford basic um, uh, nutritious food. Rasulullah sallallahu said that, and some of the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, but we cannot, not every one of us can feed fasting people. And that's true. That's true. Not only wealthy can go to paradise. But it seems from what the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that only wealthy people can get this reward because not, not everyone can afford iftar for the fasting people. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you will get this reward even if you offer date, milk, or a cup of water. Even if this is the only thing you can afford. But we need to, 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 to have this habit of feeding and sharing and, and to, to understand that I need to offer something. No matter how much I have, I can feed someone. So the question here, how many people have fed in this month of Ramadan? How many fasting people? I'm talking again about those who are in desperate need. Not, I'm not talking about inviting family and friends over. They are wealthy or inviting wealthy and they're enjoying the party and there are people over there nobody takes care of. I'm talking about how many needy people that we have fed in this month. Not only because of the great reward, but to maintain our humanity. To recognize the great blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And to practically thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by feeding those who are in need. Brothers and sisters, the month of Ramadan is the month of solidarity. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Ameen, maybe you have seen in your way um, to the masjid in the hall, uh, in the lobby out there, there are plenty of boxes. And this box is meant to collect food. This is a project run by M MCC called Fighting Against Hunger. And the whole idea is to collect food from those who have so many and to give, to give it to those who have so little. Here in Michigan. Here in Michigan. And many masajid, they offer iftar every single day. No question is asked and no tickets are sold. This is what many Muslim uh, Islamic centers and masajid do every single day. This is the month of solidarity and this is the month when we remember those who are in need, especially if they are our neighbors, our family members, and people that we have any connection with. We need to start with them. This is the concept of zakat. Money should be collected from the wealthy and given to the poor of the same place. Unless there is a need elsewhere, then we can send our zakat somewhere else. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who remember, those who are less fortunate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless us with um, food and with health and with wealth and with safety and security. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us help those who are in need. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah, Hamdan Kathir, and Tayyib, and Mubarak, and Fi, Kama, and Hibur Abuna, and Erda, Ya Rabbi, like Alhamdu Kama, and Bari, the Jalal, and Wajik, and Alim Sultanic, in the Law, and Malay, and Kabahu, Saluna, and Nabi, Yahu, and Ladina, and Amanu, Salu, and Ali, and Salim, and Taslima.
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث فأصلح لنا شأننا كله يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا إلى أحد من الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم أدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين اجعلنا من عبادك المؤمنين اجعلنا من عبادك المتقين اجعلنا من عبادك المخلصين يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا يا ربنا من الراشدين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا أصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث فأصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا إلى أحد من الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وقيامنا اللهم تقبل منا صالح أعمالنا اللهم اجعلنا في شهر رمضان من عتقائك من النار واجعلنا من المقبولين الفائزين اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين بليلة القدر اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين بليلة القدر ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا وتقبل دعاء اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين وانصر الاسلام واعز المسلمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين وصلى اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم واقم الصلاه